My dad, when he would get drunk, he would come home and he would become very abusive. Elena is from the former Soviet Union. Both her parents were alcoholics and did next to nothing in terms of taking care of their two young daughters. I remember there were days when my sister and I, we were just so hungry that we just needed something in our stomachs. And so myself and my sister, we would actually climb trees and we would eat the leaves off of those trees. Took me back to a childhood tree full of birds and dreams From this one place I can't see very far In this one moment I'm square in the dark Elena Hegmeyer is our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. You may not have lived through the exact same situation that Elena did, But you may have experienced the same feelings. Does it seem that there is no one who cares and who would welcome you? Many of you have felt unloved and unwanted and uncared for. Billy Graham says there is hope in Jesus Christ, and you'll hear more about that after Elena's story. But you can also learn more at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. GPS. God. People. Stories. Well, I grew up in a little house where everything, like, emotionally and physically was broken. Spiritually broken, too. Elena and her sister, Yulia, were born in the former Soviet Union, and they didn't know anything about God. Elena says her birth parents' alcoholism kept them from caring for the family. We had a lot of broken windows, and we couldn't fix them because we didn't have the money for it. And my parents, they would actually go off and they would work all day long, but never get paid with money or food. They always got paid with alcohol. And so each morning, my parents would go off to work. And then it was my responsibility as the oldest to try to take care of myself and my sister. And so we would actually start off our day by looking for food. And we would look in the cabinets, in the kitchen, you know, any place you can think of where you could store food. We would look every place. And the only thing we would find was alcohol bottles. When they couldn't find food in the house, the sisters would head outside. I remember there were days when my sister and I, we were just so hungry that we just needed something in our stomachs. And so myself and my sister, we would actually climb trees and we would eat the leaves off of those trees. The girls also ate apples from trees behind their house, and sometimes they took potatoes from their neighbors' yards. And then, every once in a while, a neighbor would even invite them in for a bowl of soup. You may ask yourself why Elena and Yulia were home during the day. It was because their parents hadn't placed them in school. My parents just, you know, didn't want to take care of it or anything like that. So, like, my sister and I, like, spend our days just doing nothing, looking for food and playing with rocks and sand and stuff. So much hurt and preservation Like a tendril around my soul Days spent foraging for food and playing with rocks. That was life for Elena and Yulia until they were about eight and six. That's when their parents were put in jail for stealing. The sisters were placed in an orphanage. And being in that first orphanage to me was kind of like safe haven just because they provided someone there 24-7 to help me to raise my sister. And also they allowed us to go to school. Elena and Yulia were at that orphanage for about two years. Then they were moved to another orphanage. It was a move that Elena was not excited about. I mean, I was glad to be there just because my alternative was the streets or my family home where abusive father was at, and I would rather be at the orphanage than being at home because of just how scary it was. And so uh, being at this orphanage, again, it was better than being at home. But at the same time, there was no love at this orphanage. You know, there was no hope at the orphanage. No hope until the day the ministry Samaritan's Purse showed up with Operation Christmas Child shoeboxes for all the kids. I just remember that they handed me a shoebox And I was wrapped in a colorful wrapping paper, very bright, you know, and my world was very dark, very gray. You know, there was, I mean, what kind of a color would be like no future, you know, and stuff like that. So having this shoebox full of colorful paper and stuff like that, that was just fantastic. And so I was actually afraid to open my box because the outside looked colorful and glorious that I was actually afraid the inside 
wouldn't be as bright as the outside because by that time, I mean, I've been disappointed by my parents and by my first orphanage, you know, yeah. just disappointment after disappointment. And then when I got the chance to actually open that shoebox, that was just amazing, you know, just to see how bright the inside of the box was compared to the outside. Almost all the small gifts in Elena's shoebox were pink, which she loved. And just like every other Operation Christmas Child shoebox, Elena's included a storybook about Jesus, which she read over and over again. I thought it was a fairy tale, just because it was telling me that there was a creator that loved me, a nobody, an orphan. He loved me enough to give up his son, and his son loved me enough to die for me on the cross. You know, I just couldn't, like, wrap my head mind around that just because by that time by that age I just didn't see that kind of love I mean I didn't see any love really from my parents didn't see any love from like the orphan workers and stuff and then this booklet was telling me that there was such a love as God's love and I just couldn't wrap my mind around it but I was hoping because I needed something to hold on to at that moment I was hoping that this could be a true story you know and that's what led me to praying just because i was like well if it's true then maybe something comes out of it but if it isn't it keeps my mind kind of you know hopeful The one tangible thing that Elena was hoping for was that she and her sister might be adopted by a family in the United States, and she had reason for that hope. You see, they had attended a camp here in the U.S. And the church that was hosting us was Winsville Christian Church, and it's in Winsville, Missouri. And uh, my parents-to-be, Chris and Sarah Hegemeyer, they were working at that church. And so when we were there, they were there volunteering. You know, my dad was a youth pastor at that time. Um, in that church, and my mom was a secretary in that church. But my sister and I, we would always end up playing with these two little boys. Mm -hmm. And we didn't realize them, but they were the kids of our parents-to-be, so Josiah and Joel. And my dad actually told me the story where he, like, saw us playing together day after day, and he liked that picture. He felt like God was telling him, this is the finished product of the family. You know, this is how it's supposed to look. And eventually it would look like that, but not before Elena and Yulia went back to their home country. At the time, they had no idea the Hegmeyers were thinking about adopting them. They thought maybe the woman who had been hosting them in the United States might adopt them, but they soon got word that that wasn't going to happen. At the end of it, it was just like, okay, I know I have my sister, I know she has me, and that's all we have, you know. But... Then I got that booklet, and it's like, hey, there could be someone who is higher, who is greater, who keeps and watch over me, you know. And so after that, it was just like, well, I would be silly not to pray, you know, because I had nothing else to do. Now with patience in our suffering, perseverance in our prayers, with good reason, this hope. God's answer to Elena's prayers was yes. The Hagmeyers had decided to move forward with adopting Elena and Yulia. And all things considered, the adoption process went pretty smoothly. When I say, like, I see God's handprints all over my life, like, there is no denying it. I mean, from the moment when he provided for us at former Soviet Union home into being moved from orphanage to orphanage. And with the orphanage life, I mean, my sister and I, it's a miracle that we stay together because in the orphanages, usually siblings get separated. One of the first challenges everyone in the Hegmeyer family had to work through was the language barrier. My parents didn't know my language. I didn't know theirs. My father, I mean, they learned a couple phrases, you know, but the most important one that my dad learned I think for me it was um, when he says, I love you in my native language, uh, which is a routine even to this day. He would come into our room 
and he would hug us, give us a kiss on our forehead, and he would say, Yati Balu Blue, which means I love you. Chris and Sarah Hegmeyer showed the girls they loved them in a lot of ways, but this one way is especially noteworthy and pretty cute. On my first day of school, my dad decided to go to sixth grade with me. And he actually stayed there all day long because I didn't know a lot of, you know, English. And so he would sit, and he's a pretty big guy, sitting in a small desk, you know, and every time somebody, the teacher would tell us something, he'll point or, you know, I would yeah. copy it. Yeah. And so we went to PE class, and the teacher was yelling, and I have no idea what we're doing, you know, and so my dad does push-ups. So I'm like, okay, so I'll do push-ups. So, like, my dad is amazing. I mean, he went to sixth grade for me again for a day. It was amazing. Both Elena and Yulia surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ within two years of being adopted. And I think my dad had big part to play in that decision just because, I mean, every time I looked in the Bible and I tried to study up on God and it just, he never failed me into like teaching me something new Mm -hmm. in a Bible and showing me more of who he is, you know, and just looking back also and seeing every print of him, you know, in my life and how I could have died of starvation or I could have stayed in the orphanage and then be turned into prostitution because that's what we had to look forward to or be separated from my sister. But he kept it all together. And then he brought us into this Christian family that led us to learn more about him. And what she has learned about God has been life changing. At first, I was ashamed because I was an orphan. You know, I was a nobody and all the brokenness that came with it, I felt like, you know, like I was unwanted, you know, and I I don't think no one would want to be like, hey, guess what? I'm an unwanted person, you know? And so I always felt ashamed of that. But at the same time, getting to know God and Him leading me in the way that He does, I learned that in that brokenness, He wanted me, you know, and He was there and He was always trying to get me to Him. What was true for Elena is true for you, too. Jesus is always drawing you to himself. Will you say yes? Will you let him have control of your life? We can tell you more about that at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. And if you're already a believer, you can use that same website to go deeper in your faith. The address, again, is findpeacewithgod.net. So a question for you. Do you know what a dandelion barbie is? Dandelion barbie. Uh, If you don't, Elena will tell us in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Many of you have felt unloved and unwanted and uncared for. Billy Graham. Does it seem that there is no one who cares and who would welcome you? Let me assure you that there is one who has gone to the very depths of suffering and death in order that you might be assured of a home in heaven. Jesus said, him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Though all others may turn against you, and though you may be unloved and unwanted, they are the open arms of the Father whose heart yearns for your return. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ offers forgiveness for the past, companionship for the present, and hope for the future. If you turn from your sins and surrender your life and heart to Him, will you do it now? A quick reminder that if you'd like to know more about surrendering your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, as Billy Graham just talked about, we can help. Go to our website, findpeacewithgod.net. So, Jim, I don't know about your daughters, but both of mine enjoyed playing with Barbie dolls. In fact, one of them still does. I I sometimes thought Barbie was a third daughter. Yes, uh, she was uh, uh, well represented under the roof. Well, our guests on this episode of GPS wanted to play with Barbie dolls when she was living in one of the orphanages there in the former Soviet Union. Problem was, the orphanage didn't have any Barbie dolls. So Elena and her friends got resourceful. We would actually get a small skinny stick 
and then we would get a dandelion and we would separate the stem of the dandelion into like three little pieces of hair because you know we want our barbies to have three pieces of hair at least um if you're lucky you can have five it's really cool and then you stick it on the stick and there you have it that's mm-hmm. a barbie i have no idea how they came about but we figured out that if we were to give a shower to our barbie you know wash her hair yeah. The and then put it in the sun, the hair will actually curl. Mm. So you can have a Barbie with curly hair or you can have a Barbie with straight hair. It was fantastic. Elena Hegmeyer has a great sense of humor, as you can tell. Also, as you can tell, though, she has experienced a lot of pain. Thanks to God's work in her life, though, a lot of joy as well. We are delighted with the time she took to share her story with us. And we are also delighted that you took time to listen. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. We also want to thank Sarah Groves for allowing us to use some of her music on this episode. And one other thing, we want to let you know that you can listen to each and every episode of this podcast on our website. The address is billygramradio.com. Org. And if you like what you hear on there, um, you can leave us a comment and let us know about it. We appreciate that. The address again is billygramradio.org. This is GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. He's all-